Welcome to the K-12 Plus series of educational videos. This video is meant to be an overview for the Life in Bloom module. For accompanying teaching materials and resources, please visit us on the web at www.abrcoutreach.osu.edu. For this experiment, you will need petri dishes, filter paper, toothpicks, GA solution, aluminum foil, parafilm or other tape, a magnifying glass, and of course, your seeds. Before you get started, you should label your filter paper. Though you should always follow your teacher's instructions, there's a few things you should probably include. For example, the genotype of the seeds you're using, here shown as Wild Type Columbia or GA12, the treatment you're subjecting your plates to, either water control or GA solution, your group number, and of course, the date. Now that you're ready to get started with the experiment, let's prepare the petri dish. First, grab two pieces of circular filter paper and place them inside each of the petri dishes, using your fingers and the back of a marker or pen to flatten out the edges and try to make it as neat as possible. Repeat this process with two more pieces of filter paper, including the one you labeled earlier. Again, use your fingers and the back of a pen or marker to flatten out and leave the surface as smooth as possible. Next, turn the plate around and put any additional labeling information that will help you recognize the plate, including treatment, group number, and genotype. Once you finish your labeling, you're ready to start your experiment. Pipette 6 to 8 milliliters of either water or gibralic acid solution into each of your plates. Your goal is to soak the filter paper without leaving any standing pools of liquid. Once you've completed these steps for every plate, you're ready to spread the seeds. First, sprinkle some seeds onto a piece of wax paper or regular paper. Be careful not to sprinkle too many. You can always add more if needed. Next, use a container of clean water to dip the very tip of a toothpick. With its tip wet, you can use the toothpick to move individual seeds from the wax paper to your petri dishes. Simply touch the tip to an individual seed and then place it in the correct spot over your petri dish. Be careful to place the seeds within each section so that you can later identify them. In order to keep the plates from drying, use a piece of parafilm or other tape and wrap it around the edges of each petri dish. This is an important step, otherwise your plates will dry out and your plants will die. At this point your experimental design should look as follows. Each of your seed genotypes should have been evenly split between your water control and your gibralic acid treatment. If possible, you should have also done at least three replicates of each of these treatments in order to perform statistical analysis on your results after you're done collecting your data. Once you're done preparing your plates, stack them and wrap them in aluminum foil. This will keep them in the dark during the cold treatment you're going to subject them to. The cold treatment is known as stratification and it's an important step in breaking seed dormancy and synchronizing seed germination. After stratification, remove your plates from your refrigerator or cold room unwrap them and place them in the light. This can either be a special light rack or your classroom desk. Make sure to write down the day you took out the plates. This is day zero. Each day following, keep track of your seats. You can do this by looking at the plates under the microscope, but if such facilities are not available, a magnifying glass will work just as well. When examining your petri dishes, your goal should be to determine the number of germinating seats. Here are some example pictures of what you might see under a microscope or a magnifying glass. Note how the left seed still has its seed coat intact and still has not germinated. In the center you can see another seed with its seed coat broken and a radical emerging. This is the first sign of germination. As the seed continues to develop, you'll notice the root growing out more and the tissue starting to green. Each day you should count the number of germinating seeds, being careful not to count any seeds that simply have their seed coat broken without any radical emerging. Only count the seeds that have already germinated. Make sure to record your data each day in the provided data collection sheets. When you're done, graph your results in the provided Excel sheet and take note of the curves, looking not only at the maximum germination percentage but also at the rate at which each genotype germinated. For instance, notice that while the GA5 mutant and the Columbia wild type reached similar levels of germination by day 4, their rates of germination were quite different, with Columbia reaching higher germination levels by day 2. 
Be sure to also compare the germination of each genotype under both water and GA treatment. For example, the GA12 mutant should only germinate in the presence of exogenous GA. For more information on performing this module, including teaching resources and analysis tools, please visit us at www.abrcoutreach.osu.edu.